Hello. Okay, so I've come here from TikTok and I have like I've been making um some prints on I uh, listen to the Earthsea podcast. So today I want to show you I I just want to make some islands and this is one of the ones I did um while listening to the BBC audiobook of uh, Artsy, which was on um, available for free uh, on the Internet Archive, but I saw it recently was taken down and it's on Amazon. So I'm just going to play it here and you can listen in if you like. And so I've been making these prints listening to... Um, the Artsy podcast and I'm just gonna show you um, like the way I do it and for that I think for this session I'm just gonna make like an island like this and just draw some stuff on it and for that I have got myself a jelly plate I have two we won't need this right now so this is the jelly plate that I've been using for three, four years now. It's I think it's a silicone mold and it is really small and cute and it like I can carry my kit in like a little makeup box. So this is perfect for it. And for this, I would be needing some seeds. That's how I got my islands done. And just your regular seeds and some ink so this is the block printing ink that I use and it's 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 pretty it's all right so because it's uh, I'm used to the portrait format on TikTok, so I'm not used to this format at all the landscape format so I'm gonna try making this in the landscape format and it looks like I don't know if it's going to work. Anyway, so I'm going to start the audiobook and I hope you enjoy. Okay. Ursula Le Guin's Earth Sea, Part 1, Shadow. Based on the novels here. A Wizard of Earth Sea and the Tombs of Atom. Adapted by Judith Which I am going to So that's I'm going to do that off camera because uh, it's messy You're awake look what I did. I wonder I wonder if fire is such a good idea I know but who would follow us the ones who knew must be dead The cold woke me up and I still have my flint so I made a fire and this is a walnut tree. We can eat. Tell me about the trees on Rope again. The grove. Well, it seems like any forest when you first see it. Not very large. And the fields come up to it on the north and the east. And there are hills to the south and west. Usually. Usually? Oh, well, it's always changing. Sometimes from Rope North, you try to see where it ends and can. Is the island so big? Bigger than ours? No, smaller than Atuan. Smaller than Gaunt, where I was born. Half in a great isle, wh where I'm taking you. That's the biggest of all great forests in Havna. But none greater than the Grove and Rock. How far does it go? How far does the mind go? The, the further you walk, the more you begin to feel something else. Roots gone deep under your feet, into the earth. Okay. Space. Darkness. Silence. The old powers. One's not taught at Rogue School. You lived with them at the tombs. The patterner says our wizardry and the old powers meet on Rogue Knoll. I'd like to walk there. Why must we go to Havna? To take the ring. Give it back with its rune of peace to the inner isles. Are they all dark, like you, on the inner isles? <laughs> Darker, some of them. Some... Lighter. You cogs are the lightest race of all. 
Had you seen Kargs before you came to the tombs? Mm. When I was a child, Kargish warriors raided Gaunt. When you were just a babe. Oh, in this life, anyway. You're laughing at me. Laughing at you? White Lady of the Ring, this poor man's life giver, I'm not. Laughing. <laughs> a little. And honouring you too. Listen to your tree. All our stories whisper in the leaves, the patterner says. You hear the voices? Men. Women. Children. Dragons? Especially dragons. That's a hawk. Mm. A hawk and gone, perhaps. It's where my story began. Many years ago. A thousand miles away. And here. Now. I'm 13. I've worked at the forge all night with my father, me at the bellows and at the fire, making spearheads for horse and rakes. At dawn, I slink out into the mist and up the hill. Ready? For what? Finding goats. In this fog? It's a new spell. Watch. What are you doing with your arms? That's not a spell. Spells crafty words. Spells a weaving thing, Aunt says. Like dancing. Noth hieth mark man. Look. Over there. Hiolk han. Nerth han. The goats shuffle round us in a tight knot, staring through the dark slots in their eyes, nudging, pushing. Get off! Let them go where they're at this body! Hey, no, Oak, in the valley. What's that? More fog. There's flames in it. It's smoke. The cogs have landed. Come on. What are you so excited about? They'll kill us all. Something's happening. At last. Something that matters. Wait! Father! Get in here. I'll flush your lid. Strap that to something as soon as it's cool enough. These are no good. We're not warriors. They'll carve us up. Scared? I don't want to die skewered on a spear before my man without knowing what I can do. You can do what you're told once in your useless life. The others are waiting. They need something to fight me. Help bring these. Yeah. And if you're so keen on being a man, you can fight with us like a man. And die like a pig. This was a gear. There are a hundred of them. Eighteen of us. Shame the mist going might have helped. Well, they've arrived. Let's go the bastards. I have another one. Find something. Make it all. Oh. Fog weaving. Binding sort. Pier Aru Seoge. Simon Seoge. Pier Aru Seoge. Simon Seoge. Ah, ah. If you can't fight, lie down and stay. Ah. Don't kick him! Uh, He's making a spell! This what? I fit my soul. Look. See. I'll keep the fog thick as long as I can. You and the others, take them up to the cliff edge of high fall. I'll be damned. Do what I say. The spell fog hides the houses and weaves shadows that writhe like great snarling beasts. The Karg warrior who hesitates gets a homemade spear in his guts. And those who follow the shadows run until they run right out onto the air. The tale of the boy who wove crafty mists spreads fast as Kargish fire across the island. 
the raider's fleet at Valmouth gets torched, and the last carg slaughtered by the time a stranger arrives in Ten Alders village. He's bareheaded with a great oak staff. My witch aunt sees at once it's a wizard and brings him to our house where I've been lying deaf and blind and speechless. Four days and nights he's been like that. Saved us all he did and now I can't help him. Perhaps you can, master. What's his use then? As a babe, his mother called him Dooney. You're not his mother? Well, she died when he was a year or so. I'm her sister. There's a bruise on his face. Sir, I, I thought it was a coward, see? Standing there in the fog, gibbering instead of fighting. Knocked the boy down in the middle of the spell, and even then, it held. There's great power in him. Even from the far side of the island, I felt the balance of the world change. It's overtaxed his strength. Who are you, Master? Ogio of Realdi. The mage? Him who tamed the earthquake, brother. I saw right away the boy had powers, Master Ogion. Be true. The birds have always come to him. Up on the eye fell, sir. Hawks, eagles. So I started teaching him. Thought it were just rhymes and herbs and charms, you know. No wizardry, Master Ogion, I swear. No weather working. I don't know where this came from. From within, mistress. Made of many impulses. Wild thing. I came as soon as I could. Not as swift as I used to be afoot. Surely a mage can come as a spirit sending in a moment. Yes, but uh, sending has no skin and bone. To call him back when he's gone, touch is needed. Has he had his name there yet? No, sir. To keep the mage born ignorant, that's a very dangerous game, and, uh, my friends. I'm going to sit and... You give him his feast day as soon as he's well them. enough. I'll stay and name him myself. Thank you. You do us a great honour, Master. After that, with your permission, Bronsmith, I'll take him back with me to Ray Albi. See what we have here. Teach him. Or see he's well taught.